So, uh, Will D. Chan here. So, uh, thank you for watching my channel. So, today's topic is not so much uh, an academic topic, but, uh, you know, it's just to share <clears throat> one of those topics I learned when I was a student doing my ACCA. Uh, back then, you know, when I was studying management accounting, like many other students, you know, would when they go to business school. <clears throat> So uh, the, the topic that I, I learned was expected values. Now it, it sounded very scientific, you know, it plays a uh, framework on how to uh, make decisions. But uh, at the time when I learned this, you know, like many other students, I had no clue what expected values was about. I had no clue about decision making. So I was clueless like any other student, you know, doing this, whether, you know, uh, you're doing this in business school or whether you're doing this in <coughs> um, some school of accountancy. I, I myself, I went through the same phase and quite clueless about the concept of con expected values. So today I'm sharing this uh, not so much from, again, uh, the academic perspective, but uh, more to share the uh, more practical aspect of this uh, concept. Okay, so let's begin. So what is expected value? and the definition. Now, it, it is defined as the total value arrived at by multiplying each possible outcome by its uh, probability of occurring and summing up the results. So, say it's a uh, Howard Marks in his memo, right? And uh, of course, if you read any other accounting textbooks, you find the same. And you know, if we repeat the same for two or more decisions under consideration, uh, logically, will then elect the one with the highest expected value or perhaps we will prioritize resources to you know undertake the decision which gives the highest expected value. Now that is very logical and very rational. Now that was what I learned when I first did management accounting back in early 2000 as an amateur accounting student. Now uh, there seemed to be nothing wrong with doing this. You know, if you have two or three or more decisions then <coughs> Expected value was a very scientific uh, process of uh, determining what are the most desirable uh, decisions to be made, right? And sorry for the uh, typo, yeah. So that's, that, that makes it very logical and very rational. But you know, expected value is a mathematical exercise. Right? As Paul Marx in 2014, he described in his article uh, uh, titled Dare to be Great. So he says, keep in mind, however, that uh, only one event and its consequence will occur rather than the weighted average uh, consequence. Now, you have to note that uh, expected value uh, basically takes into consideration many possible outcomes. Now, the key word is many possible outcomes. And only one outcome would eventually crystallize, right? Uh, to quote you an example, like uh, baking a, a cake, uh, I always quote students about baking a cake. Like when you bake a cake, what are the possible outcomes? The possible outcomes are that the cake turns out perfectly like what you see in the uh, recipe book, or it, the cake may come out, turn out burnt, because uh, you know the, the temperatures are too high, or perhaps you turn out um, too sweet, right? Uh, and but you know what there is only one outcome that is whether the cake comes out sweet or uh, too too dry or just nice so there can only be one outcome right you can't have uh, a weighted average outcome for cake baking now the same applies to businesses like for instance when you start a business what are the possible outcomes well if you succeed uh, you can be very successful or you might do like any other business, you know, average returns or you may fail completely, you run out of cash flows and you declare bankruptcy, right? And only one outcome can happen. So thus we say that if a decision has a certain outcome that you can't live with, then it's irrelevant to base one's decision making on the expected value of uh, all its consequences, right? And that was what uh, Howard Marks uh, said in this article uh, titled Dare to be Great, part 2. So indeed, if, uh, that is very true if one considers about <coughs> even launching a rocket into space. Now, uh, if I were to tell you that 
Uh, tomorrow I'm going to give you a million dollars to, or maybe not just a million, but a hundred million, maybe two, three hundred million, to launch a rocket into space. And that is the only shot that you have. Now, uh, obviously, you know, uh, you can't live with the financial consequences of a failed launch. How many times can you miss or fail to launch a rocket? How many times can you live with a rocket exploding in space? Or maybe exploding on a platform? So, uh, even if the expected value appears, very appealing, but uh, the fact that you can't live with certain outcomes means that that decision is irrelevant. Right? It's not relevant to make such a decision because the outcomes, the, such an adverse outcome is too much to bear. Consider also, likewise, if I were to offer you 100 million, um, US 100 million, to anyone who lives after uh, participating in a game of Russian roulette, would you be brave enough to participate? Now, um, and you know what, we all know, because there are six chambers in a roulette and uh, there is one that is loaded, not surprisingly, five of the contestants will walk away looking incredibly smart and brave, while one unfortunate contestant will be bound to lie dead on the floor. Now, that came from uh, Nicholas Nastin Taleb's book, uh, Food by Randomness, and that, that's exactly true. Would you dare to then uh, take part in such a game? You wouldn't dare to because um, there is an outcome that you can't live with. That is, uh, that you know the chamber is loaded and you treat yourself dead. Right. So uh, that basically means that you can't make such decisions based on expected value. Right. Okay, and uh, this brings to my main message today that is about speculation. Because, you know, um, because of the topic that I teach in school, right accounting related subjects, I, uh, I tend to have regular inquiries, not surprisingly, on how to beat the market. So students will come to me and they'll look, uh, you know, very enthusiastic about what they have learned in class, you know, how do I use this to beat the market? You know, so one of the more bold inquiries I had was uh, how to make money from foreign, foreign currency. And another was uh, how to win the market from the use of derivatives. So there is this deep misunderstanding that uh, many, I mean by many that one can get lucky with a few stocks and make that first million. Now, it really doesn't work like that. Another very tall tale I heard was uh, how someone went to drill down all his credit lines to speculate in a market correction. I also heard of another one where um, someone uh, took a contra position right, and then uh, and tried to short a certain index. And, you know, he ended up... Uh, losing lots of money because the market went the other way. Uh, and the problem with many of these um, uh, what I call it, events I came across, these things that I heard of, is that people don't understand that you can't just look at expected values and, and expect that the average would, would uh, be the case over the long term. You just need one bad day to uh, wipe you out. Just one bad day or one bad decision to wipe you out. That's that. Now, and all these uh, attempts to beat the market or all these attempts to get rich quick are no different from playing Russian roulette. The expected value seem very attractive, you know, like um, based on my earlier example, right? Uh, six contestants go on stage, <coughs> five walk away, uh, you know, and they'll look incredibly smart and intelligent, and one would lie on the floor dead. So while the expected value seems very attractive, but certain outcomes of total loss can be just as effective in causing deep financial damage. In the case of Russian roulette, that is the permanent loss of life. Right. So we can't just make decisions based on expected values. Right. It doesn't work that way. Of course, you know, uh, according to uh, you know the accounting textbooks, uh, we use this to understand certain decisions. You know uh, how attractive it is, but. Uh, as a, it is more like a tool to, you know, to appreciate uh, an investment or to appreciate a certain decision to be made, right? And in no circumstance can it be used as a standalone tool. Now, some time back, I heard of uh, this uh, very interesting statement from a certain acquaintance. He said that, well, you know, I had uh, a friend that uh, drew down all my all, all his lines. You know, he said in his words, he said, drew down all my lines. And then uh, had some uh, 
significant amount of capital and went to uh, buy a, a very undervalued uh, equity during a market correction. So he came out, he made a lot of money. Now this is exactly the case of playing a game of Russian roulette. For all you know, what happens if the market went lower still? Now, uh, you won't be able to sustain uh, a situation where uh, you know you enter into a position and you don't have the capability to hold that position. In other words, if the market go the other way and then you were in hoping that the market would uh, recover, uh, you know, V-shaped recovery, and it fails to do so, and at the same time you have no capital to hold that position, you would lose lots of money. Now that's the problem with uh, what many investors would, you know, would tend to make a you know, common mistake. Uh, it's not just investors, but uh, at the same time, uh, business people. I myself, you know, I ever ran a business and uh, we thought that, you know, I mean, the, the initial concept I, I had was that if I survive long enough, my business should be very profitable. However, it was not the case because there were certain outcomes that I couldn't live with. There was, there was not enough sales to sustain the business and there were too many other competitors selling the same thing. So understanding expected values and uh, it's important to realize that it's just a tool, but not uh, the only tool to assist in decision making. So says everyone, in fact, I think, uh, usually I try not to be very encouraging, but uh, many people that uh, come to me, they tell me, I'm sure I can make money from Forex exchange. I'm sure I can make money from something, something. I'm sure that this decision I'll make will uh, materialize to be something very profitable. Now, uh, the truth of the matter is, you know, I, I try not to sound too encouraging. In fact, I have no idea. You know, uh, I'm not um, all-knowing. Right? Like any other mere mortals, I have uh, certain limits on what I know. Right? So the fact is that no one knows uh, everything very well. But you know what? Everyone has something to say. That's a matter of fact. But then the thing is, whether that's, that something said is sensible and whether it is uh, well thought out and meaningful at all is a different thing. So usually I come back and I pose this one question, what, what makes you so sure? Right? A student told me that, uh, can I invest in currencies? For example, this certain currency, and I know that the central bank is going to announce this, this, this. So I'll just invest in that currency and hope that I can make a quick buck. So I tend to ask people like them, what makes you so sure? You can't be certain, you know, because, for all you know, the central bank might say that we're not going to do that, we're going to do something else. Right? And, and such things happen all the time. Right? So Mark Twain said that it's not what you don't know. Right? Okay, I have a missing word there. It's supposed to be, it's not what you don't know, but what you know for sure and in truth that gets you. Right? And uh, that, that's uh, something that we all have to be very careful about. Right? You can be very sure. But uh, don't forget, while you're very sure about something, it can be exactly wrong because you fail to consider certain other factors that are very relevant. In the case of the central bank, you know, uh, we are very sure that the central bank may raise interest rates, but then the reverse is true that the central bank may say that, okay, we're done with rates hike for this year and that's that. All right. Now, my final point here is that uh, okay, sorry, I, I have another missing word here. It's very true, sorry, missing word there. It's very true and very important to clarify what you know and what you knew, right? And especially these are facts, you know, whether these are facts or are they mere speculative opinions. Now, the thing with uh, people is that, you know, we rather uh, believe in things that, we want to believe in, you know, like uh, what I once uh, heard from a friend, he was telling this to his wife, he said this to his, to his wife, he said that it's up to you what you want to believe. And it's exactly true, right? It's exactly up to what you want to believe. Uh, and, you know, Charlie Munger could give this uh, quote, and uh, I think that's a very uh, meaningful quote. That quote went like that. He said that for what the man wishes, that he shall believe. And that's true, you know? So we have to distinguish between uh, an opinion and a fact, you know, 
we should act on the basis of facts rather than opinions, right? Uh, speculative, speculative opinions uh, are, should not form the primary basis for a decision to be made, right? Any decision to be made should be factual as far as possible. So I come to the end of uh, this presentation. Now, uh, in nowhere in this uh, presentation is there any uh, representation given, you know, on uh, investments, right? I uh, make no representations on what you should invest in, and there are no opinions expressed regarding how you should invest. So this is uh, purely uh, meant for purpose of sharing, right? About the topic of expected values. Okay, here's the link to uh, Howard Marks. Um, article on that degree that to be great you can find this on oaktreecapital.com uh, it's a very meaningful article and you know, shares a lot about uh, decision making just when you think that you're right you, you can be wrong you can be exactly wrong now there are so many examples of uh, people who thought that they are right and they went to make such decisions now we have to bear in mind that you know and as that, that came from Howard Marks that you know being ahead of your time means that you can be exactly wrong so it it matters not that you you can be right today and then uh and that you know you will be rewarded for making a right decision sometimes right decisions take time to materialize and you have to ask yourself you know uh, is that the, are you willing and be patient enough to wait for those outcomes to arise like previously when i started my own business um you know uh the the thought was that there was a certain consumer market that uh, was interesting enough, seemed viable enough to target at. So then the decision was made to start such a business to cater towards such a group of consumers. Then, uh, of course, after the business uh, you know, uh, commenced operation, uh, we realized that, uh, that uh, the business didn't have a competitive advantage. There was no competitive advantage because everyone else was doing the same. So. The point here is that decision making cannot be just based on, um, you know, cannot be just based on academic principles and uh, formulas, right? Uh, various other qualitative factors need to be considered as well, right? So it's not as simple as you know, like, hey, that decision seemed uh, wonderful because of that high expected value, so therefore, that must be a sound decision to be made. It doesn't work like that at all. But yet, uh, in practice, you know, uh, it, it's not uncommon to see uh, businesses entering into decisions that appear very irrational, that happens all the time, right? And, and that is a trademark characteristic of capitalist, capitalistic markets. So uh, with that, I hope that uh, this has been informative and it's uh, a sharing of my thoughts about expected values. So those of you who attended my class and you thought expected values seem fascinating and very easy to apply. Well, uh, it goes far more deeper than that, you know, and decision making is uh, a far more complex topic you know, than what we teach in class. Thank you for watching. I'm Will Dicha and, thank, and uh, you have been watching this on my YouTube channel. Thank you and have a great day.